Crafty Gemini. I post weekly videos right here on my YouTube channel and in this video I'm sharing with you my review of the Juki DX5 computerized sewing machine. Now many of you already know that I own a brick and mortar sewing studio in Gainesville, Florida called The Sewing Coop. So at my studio I personally teach all kinds of sewing and quilting and crafting classes to pretty much everybody, kids, ages, all the way up to adults. And so I recently purchased some of the Juki DX5s to use in my more intermediate and advanced classes at the sewing coop. Now I have a Juki DX7, which is a, a step up from the DX5 in my home studio here, and oftentimes I will use it when I film video tutorials for you, like sew alongs, where I'm making garments and things that require me to use a stretch stitch oftentimes, or zigzag stitches and things like that. Now for the Juki DX5 that I'll be reviewing for you in this video, very similar to the Juki DX7 which I have here, it's just a step down because it basically has uh, a little bit less decorative stitches and maybe some of the accessories I think are different. Like the DX7 comes with the extension table, the DX5 does not, uh, things like that. But we're gonna go over the machine. Basically the guts of both machines are the same. I love these machines. They are computerized sewing machines. They do not have any embroidery features. This is a standalone computerized sewing machine with tons of bells and whistles. And a quick disclaimer before we jump right into the review, I just wanna make it clear that I don't work for Juki. They don't pay me to say anything or to take pictures or make video reviews or anything about their brand. Uh, what else? I'm not a brand ambassador for them and they don't send me free sewing machines. I buy my machines with my money from Tim at so many things in Mount Dora, Florida. So I just wanna get that out there because people always think that there's something else behind these video reviews, okay? I purchased these machines from my studio and I'm doing the review so you can see why I put my money into these machines and hopefully that comes across. Because as far as I'm concerned right now in the research that I've done and in the experience that I have with a gazillion sewing machines, these are the best machines right now for the best price point. I mean, I don't know of any other make and model that can do everything that this machine can do that comes with the capabilities, accessories, and settings that this one does for the same or even lower price point. If you know of one that can compete with this model at the price point, leave me a comment below. I'm not married to any one brand of sewing machine and that's the cool thing about my freedom, right? Any day I can pick up and buy a different machine that I find better to use for my project. So I hope you enjoy this video review. Leave me a comment below letting me know what you think about it and if you know of another machine that will be good competition for this one, I'd love to check it out. Hope you enjoy the video and I'll meet you back here at the end. So to start off with, this is some of the stuff that I store in the box, but I'll show you what it all comes with, a DVD, your warranty information sheet that you wanna fill out and send in, then you have the user manual. It also has the knee lever, you know, to press with your knee and bring the presser foot up, but you can see that I don't even use it on my machines and I'll show you why, because this machine has a really cool feature that really negates me having to use this. So anyways, it does have that. This part goes into the machine. The rest of the lever hangs down under your table so that your knee can push it and it helps bring the presser foot up in case you want to use that. And then the last thing here is a little accessory pack. It does have a walking foot here and like a free motion quilting foot, a pack of needles and some other stuff. One thing that I do like about this is that it comes with a really sturdy plastic case and it has that pocket in the front where you can store the foot pedal, your power cord, user manual, whatever else you need in there. So that's really handy. And then this is what the beautiful machine looks like. I love, love, love the sleekness of it. It's all smooth right here, so all these buttons are touch to get them to do all the different things that you can do. Here is the little lid where you're gonna thread your a thread from the top and you can see that when I open it up it has all these different menus and within each menu it has tons of gorgeous different decorative stitches even alphabets in print in kind of a cursive -y font uh, a couple different fonts actually and then numbers as well all right so I've turned on the machine and I want to briefly go over the display here to point out some things that you'll find on most all sewing machines but there's also some extra bells and whistles here that are definitely reflective of the price point of this higher end machine model. So here we have a bobbin winder, most machines have this. The cool thing about this model is that it has its own separate motor to wind the bobbin. So you know how typically you have to turn on the machine and you have to press down the foot pedal to get the bobbin winder to wind, you don't have to do that here. All you do is once you have your bobbin and your thread, you know, you thread it all through there, and when you press this in, you'll see that it starts to spin all on its own. 
it's super quiet, you can barely hear it, and that allows for you to be setting up and getting other things together for your project without having to be holding down the foot pedal to wind your own bobbin. Once it's done, it will either automatically stop by itself, or if you don't need quite as much thread on there, you can always just pull back on there to make it stop. Then we have the tension assembly here, and you can see that it says auto. So this has automatic thread tensioning. Very rarely do I ever have to either go down or up on my tension. And most all the time, I would say probably uh, eight times out of 10, nine times out of 10, I just leave it on automatic and it works just fine for the tensioning. Here you have the little uh, spool pin to put your thread on top. And then you have all the color coordinated lines and numbers telling you in what order to wind around this way to, for the bobbin and then how to come here and thread the machine. So you just follow the numbers, the lines, and the markings to thread your sewing machine like you would any other machine. As far as the other buttons that you see here, let's go over, we'll start here. This button has a pair of scissors on it and this is to cut the threads. So when you're done sewing, you don't have to like bring the needle up, pull out a long tail of thread and then cut the threads yourself like you would do on, an, on a basic mechanical machine or on a lot of even newer models these days. You can press this button once you're done sewing your seam and it will automatically cut the threads for you. So you just get your presser foot going, lift it up and take your project out without having to grab scissors to cut the thread. So very, very handy uh, feature. Here you have your needle up and down. You can set it so that the machine, when it stops sewing, it stops with the needle down or the needle up. Or if you're getting to the end of a seam and you just wanna stitch like one or two more stitches, instead of trying to wing it with the foot pedal, you can press this and do one or two stitches at a time as the needle goes up and down to slow things down. Then this really cool feature here is the presser foot up and down. So if I press this button, the presser foot comes up on the machine. If I press it again, it goes down. So very, very handy. Uh, and this is definitely a high-end feature. You don't find very many models. I don't think there's another one from a different manufacturer that has this presser foot lift button at the same price point that this machine comes in, which is really, really great. Then you have your speed control here. And the Juki machines have like a little tortoise and a hare. So you have like the little turtle and the fast rabbit. So you know from here is really slow and here is really fast. So you can adjust how fast the machine goes. Even if you're flooring the foot pedal, it won't go faster than whatever speed you've set it to. Underneath that, we have a little dot and that is our lock stitch button. If instead of doing back stitches, you want the machine to just take a couple stitches right in place, that's the button you would press. Then you have your back stitch or reverse stitch button. And then this is a uh, stop and start button so that if you don't have the foot pedal connected to your machine, you can actually still sew on it by pressing this button to sew and then you press it again to stop stitching. To wind a bobbin on the Juki DX5, you'll take your empty bobbin, place it on the bobbin winder. Now I'm gonna grab my spool of thread place it here and you can see on the markings that are up top here the dashed line represents the path that you need to go with the thread in order to wind the bobbin any of the solid lines represent the path that you should go with the thread when you're ready to thread the machine so first we're going to wind the bobbin and it says one two and here's a little picture of exactly where it needs to go so it goes here and it's a little tricky, so you have to put tension on both fingers here so that you create tension in the little inch and a half or so in between my fingers so that I can floss it behind this guide but under this spring-loaded tension little knob there. So it's under there and I flossed it so I know it's caught. Then I'll go through this thread guide and then I come over and across. And I just wind uh, in a clockwise motion about four or five or six times. And then in the base of the bobbin winder, you'll see these little slits. And inside each slit is actually a blade. So if I scoot this behind that slit, it kind of gets cut under there. And as I pull, the thread ends up in my hand and I've trimmed it off. Then because this has a separate motor, I can just turn on the bobbin winder and it's gonna go. So if I think that's enough thread on there, I can just pull this back to get it to stop. Now I'm gonna pull off the bobbin, and again, the thread is connected to the spool, so I just slide it in between one of those slits to cut it at the blade. All right, now we're ready to thread our DX5. Now to thread the machine, I'm gonna to switch to a red thread so y'all can see it better. So we just, same thing, put it on, and now we're gonna start. It goes in front of this metal thread guide that's sticking out here, behind, I'm following number two, now it's telling me go down, so we go down, three has a U-turn kind of arrow here telling me to come back up. 
force telling me to come back down. So I came up on the right side of the take up lever and now I'm coming back down on the left side of it. And then I come down here to number five and there's always gonna be a thread guide right on top of the needle shaft. So I came down at five and there's a number six kind of engraved into the metal part here that you insert the needle into and there's a little thing sticking out on the side and this needs to be flossed behind there. That's a thread guide that I'm saying is right on top of the needle shaft. So it should be caught there. And now we need to insert this through the needle eye so that the, the machine can be threaded. This machine has an automatic needle threader. So if going through that guide is number six, this little plastic thing here has a number seven carved into it. So you just slide the thread in between these two little plastic chunks that are sticking out. So see how it's caught there? And then eight is actually on the side of the machine. And that's just the blade so that you can cut the thread. This was number eight to cut the thread. Number nine is here and I just have to push this down and it's gonna thread the needle automatically. So now I'll press number nine down and it's threaded my needle. I see a loop there. I just pull on this loop and now I'm pulled it right through and it's already through the needle eye. So let's do presser foot up. We always wanna have that thread going through the slit in the presser foot and draped over the back of the machine. Now this Juki DX5 has a top loading bobbin. This little white button here has an arrow next to it pointing towards you. So you pull on this, it lifts the little lid on this plastic cover here. It just pops up out of place and we're gonna place our bobbin in there. If you see, there's like a little image printed on the bobbin case here. So it shows you how the thread should be coming off of the bobbin. And so we are going to place the bobbin this way, place it in there. And then there are little engravings into the gray plastic pieces here that say one, two, and three. So again, it's co uh, coordinated little guides where you need to follow. So go up with the one arrow, over to the two, and then back down, and three. And there's a little blade here. So when you pull it, it cuts the thread for you. Then we can replace the lid. So the wider end of the cap, this side is gonna go in first. There's a little tab sticking out here. You wanna insert that first, kind of at a little angle like this, and then just press down on this side and it stays locked in position. So we have our thread in place. We also placed in a bobbin. I went ahead and turned the machine off just so you can see what happens and what comes on the screen as a default settings when you turn the machine on. The on and off button is off to the side. You can see that you have a screen display here that pops up and it's automatically set to the default setting, which is stitch number one. You can always reference it up top here with the stitches or down here, you can see the basic ones that begin. So it's showing you this numbers kind of grid, so that's what's selected. So that's what you see on there, zero, one, that's the first stitch and that means it's a straight stitch. This little oval here represents the spacing right underneath the needle. And that oval shape you're most often gonna see on machines that have decorative stitches or zigzag stitches because it needs that space if it's gonna bounce left to right for whatever decorative or zigzag stitch it's gonna do. The plus sign you see in the middle there represents the needle. So if the needle is in the center, that means that this automatic and default setting is set to a straight stitch with the needle position in the middle. And then you see the straight stitches. That's what the stitch is gonna look like. It's telling me here A and B, these are two different presser feet that I can have on the machine in order to stitch out the stitch that's been selected. In this case, it's what automatically comes on when you turn the machine on. So just so you know, the A foot is your universal foot. That B foot, you can see if you're familiar with sewing, that's your zipper foot. Now let's have a look at some of the different features of that straight stitch, which is your basic stitch, but that you can play around with and change. So here we have a little bit of a zigzag and it says 3.5. This is gonna be your stitch width. On a straight stitch, there is no width, right? Because it's only going straight. So 3.5 on this machine represents that center needle position. All right, so we're not gonna touch the width unless we're wanting to move the needle position over to the left or to the right. Then you would play with that and you'll see the needle move over to the right as I go up. And it goes down as I go left, or excuse me, it goes left as I go down. The other option we can play with is over here, and this is the stitch length. You'll see kind of the little dashes. The smallest one is at the bottom, then it gets longer, then it gets longer. So this is telling you this feature here that you're gonna change this number is going to be directly related to how long the stitches are. So the default setting on this machine is center needle position and 2.4 in the length of the stitch. If you want a longer stitch or you need to base something, you just go up and you can see that the numbers go up. And I'll take it all the way up so you all can see that this machine goes longer 
than some other machines on the market. You can go up to 5.0 in stitch length, and you can go all the way down to zero also. And just so you know how this relates to what the machine is going to stitch out, if you go down to zero on stitch length, that means the machine is not going to pull the fabric through because the length of the stitch is zero. So it's just going to take stitches right in place. So it's important to understand the display. Here you have stitch length, stitch width, which on a straight stitch is just representative of the needle positioning. Then you have where the needle position is. And the machine, no matter what stitch you select, it will automatically put you the suggestions here for what presser foot you need to have installed in order for the specific stitch you've chosen to stitch out correctly. And then you have up here the menu that you're on and what stitch number. Now let's have a look at the rest of the number pad here. When we turn the machine on, the number pad menu here is automatically selected, which means that for whatever button of these I press that's on the number pad here, Whatever is illustrated on the button, that's the stitch that the machine is going to do. So we're on number one right now, we went over that. If I press number two, see how it changes on the screen here. Now, the needle position, remember, because this is still a straight stitch, went from 3.5, which we said was the center needle position, to 5.0. I know because it's higher than the default setting in the center that the needle position has now moved over to the right, meaning closer to the edge of the presser foot. And if you look at the picture on the display, it's telling you, for this stitch, you should have in the A universal foot, and then it's telling you from the stitch line, the dash line you see there, to the edge of the presser foot, you see how that line is next to it, that distance between the needle and the edge of the presser foot is seven millimeters, all right? Now look what happens when I press number three. Right next to the stitch here, it says one quarter. If you know me and you know you've watched me sew for many years, I don't use quarter inch presser feet on my sewing machine. I prefer to use my presser foot as the guide. So on this machine, super handy, notice what happens. Again, the same universal foot, and now it's telling me from the needle position where the machine is going to stitch to the edge of my presser foot is a quarter of an inch. So if you want to have a scant quarter inch and make it a little bit narrower, you know that all you need to do is feed your fabric just inside of the edge of your presser foot. So without having to change to a specialty foot, I can use the same universal foot and still get perfect patchwork pieces. Some of the other popular ones, you have your zigzag stitch here, and on the zigzag, the default setting is set to 3.6 wide every time it zigs and zags, and then the length, meaning the spacing between the zig and the zags, is 1.4. You can adjust this to whatever you want. You can make them more spaced out by going up on the stitch length. You can make the zig and the zag tighter by going down on here, or any combination of the two. We have uh, a triple straight stitch, which I love to use in my stretch knit garments for hemming uh, and things like that. It looks like three lines, but again, it's a triple straight stitch, and it's telling you what foot I need to have in place, and you can always double check what stitch you have selected by looking at the top left corner of the display. Now, there are a ton of other things, and I cannot sit here and go through the whole manual with you, but I'm kind of pointing out some of the most important features. These are different menus here. You'll see them reflected on the top of the machine, each one of these icons is going to open up another sub-menu. So if I wanted to open that one, I would click OK. So 0, 6, let's say. OK. So it takes me to that stitch that belongs in that menu. OK? And then here you have other menus. You also have other, you see this arrow, it's telling me I can even go further. So you have your numbers and your fonts. And you really have to just sit down and play around with this. We're going to go back to the regular menu. Most of the time you're doing a straight stitch anyways. But I do want to go over a few other things on this machine as far as settings go that I think are totally worth the price point. Down here we have kind of a wrench and a screwdriver. This is your tools section. So we're going to click on that. And now all these different features are going to pop up. One of my favorite ones to adjust, and we're going to go over because I see an arrow there telling me that there's more left to this menu. So here we have one, you see it, that icon is like a foot on the foot pedal and the arrow going down. So if you're not familiar with Juki machines, one of the features that I absolutely love about them is that when you press the heel on the foot pedal, it will automatically cut your thread so you don't even have to press the little scissors button. But on this model of machine, as well as the DX5, you can change what hitting the heel on the foot pedal does on this machine. So we're going to stay in that one. We're going to click OK. So see the different options that we have here. I can make it so that when I press the heel down on my foot pedal, it brings my presser foot up and down. What that's going to do is eliminate the need for me to have to use that button that I showed you that was on the front of the machine. I have it automatically set to cut the thread because that's what I'm most used to, 
or sometimes people step on the heel of the machine and it starts cutting their thread and they hate it because it takes a little while to get used to it, but you can also turn the feature completely off. So in that case, and let me um, select it here, if I were to select the off, what happens is that if I press the heel of the foot pedal, nothing is going to happen. So a couple different options that you have there. Here are a few others, and whenever you see that arrow pointing to the right, that means you can keep scrolling because there's more. So here is the kind of that reverse U-turn. That's going to be a back stitch, so I can set it so that when I press the heel of the foot pedal, it does a reverse stitch. I can set it for it to do a lock stitch. I can set it for it to bring the needle up or down, okay? All these different features that you can do on here. So I encourage you definitely, if you get this machine to play around with it, I'm going to set it back to cut my thread because that's what I most often use. So that's one feature which is great on this machine because you can adjust what the, the heel of the foot pedal does. The other menu, we're going to go back in here and we're going to find the one that has here. So now we're looking at the same little shoe, the foot pedal. There's kind of a little burst going at the front. So that tells me when you're pressing the foot pedal forward, how you would typically sew. This is the presser foot and this is an arrow up. So that's telling me when I sew and I stop, it's set so that the presser foot will automatically lift up. Okay? And that is super helpful. See how it's on? You can also turn this feature off. So you can really customize the settings on this machine to whatever you want it to be. But I especially love keeping this feature with that foot pedal up, or excuse me, the presser foot up when I stop, when I stop sewing. Because if you're taking corners, if you're sewing anything that's square or rectangular, it will automatically lift the presser foot. So all you have to do is pivot your fabric. And as soon as you start sewing again, it will start sewing. You don't have to put the presser foot down. Then there's another one. Here it's the same thing, but now you see how there's an arrow up and down. This is where you can adjust how high it comes up when it stops. Mm -hmm. So if I select this, it's telling me I can go from 2.0 to 6.0. And you can hear the machine, it's lifting the presser foot higher and higher as I go up. So if you're making a handbag and you know that when you stop to take corners, you have bulky foam and different interfacings in there, set it to go to 6.0 so that when you stop sewing, the machine will automatically lift that presser foot up high enough so you can fit the bulk of the machine. So aren't these some great features? I absolutely love this. We'll leave it down for now because we're just sewing with quilting cottons. So set that to okay. So a lot of super fun features on this machine. And the presser foot lift, automatic thread cutter, those things are just must-haves for me um, once you get a taste for them and use them in your projects. So now we're going to stitch a little bit. What I did was unplug the foot pedal from the machine. So I'm going to show you how you can sew with the start-stop button. You always want to practice your sewing through two layers of fabric because that's what it's going to be doing, right, when you're using it in your projects. I'm going to bring the presser foot up by pressing this button. See how it comes up. I can line this up wherever I want it. Press it again, it brings the presser foot down, and I just turned on the machine so it's set to just the default straight stitch setting, and my foot pedal is not connected. So if I press this, see how it goes slow? Because I have it to the slowest setting. Now I'll crank it up. And I press that button to stop, and notice how the presser foot already came up for me. I'm gonna trim my threads by pressing this. And there we have a line of stitching. Now, of course, I have white thread in the bobbin and red on top, so it looks a little bit weird, but a nice row of straight stitches, okay? If I plug the foot pedal back in, then we can use all those features that we mentioned about using, where is this plug? There we go. About using the heel of the foot pedal as well as pressing forward. I have a ton of cords here because of the camera stuff, but I just want to show you. The blue part goes forward, so that's what you press when you're sewing, and the heel is this part here, the heel of it. So whatever you set that heel press on this way to do, that's what the machine is going to do. Now I'm going to go back into the settings and change it so that the presser foot automatic lift part is at the highest setting because I think that will help you see it a little bit more. So we're here, and we're going to bump it up to the 6.0 so that when I do that as I'm sewing, you'll see uh, what it does at the presser foot here. All right, so let's get that red thread to show on the white part So we'll flip it to the back of this Presser foot down Right where I want it. I'm gonna sew. I'm pressing my foot pedal And look what happens. I stop sewing and it automatically lifts that presser foot So if I had to come here and take the corner, I can just pivot let me see if I can fold this up for you guys a little bit, just so you would see how you would do it in a project. 
So say you had to pivot on a corner and come across down another straight side here. Once you turn the fabric to where you want it, you don't even have to press the presser foot uh, lever button here to put the presser foot down. You can just start sewing and the machine will automatically put it down for you. Same thing. I'm gonna get to the other end. Say I stop where I want to, the presser foot comes up automatically. I just pivot and I press the foot pedal again. It's gonna automatically put it down and continue sewing. Now say I'm done with whatever I'm sewing and I wanna cut my threads. My setting is set to, I can either press this button to cut threads or I can press the heel of my foot pedal. So I'm gonna press the heel. The machine cuts the thread for me and because we have that automatic presser foot lift, you saw that after it went back down, it cut threads and then it lifted itself back up. So I don't even have to lift the presser foot. I can just pull my project out and I'm done. Now I'll show you just a couple of the other buttons on here. So let's start somewhere here. Say we do some straight stitches and I need to back stitch. I can stop, press and hold this back stitch button. If I press it just once, it's only gonna do one back stitch. If you press and hold, it's obviously gonna keep going back until you let it go to come forward again. So now I'll show you the lock stitch, which is the dot button right there. Say you line it up, you know where you wanna sew, press your foot down, you start sewing. And now you need to anchor something right in place and you don't want to back stitch on it. So if you press this, you can see it takes a few different stitches right in place and then you're ready to continue sewing. Or if you do it at the end of something, it'll secure those stitches there. Then I can press the heel to cut my thread. The presser foot comes up automatically. I pull my project out and I'm done. Now that's just some of the basics of how to use the machine in its most simplest form. It also has an accessory case here that you can remove to expose the free arm. So if you're doing hems or sleeve bands or leg bands or even baby clothes, you can drape it over the smaller part here by removing this. Here you'll find the lever for you to put the feed dogs up or feed dogs down. Sometimes when we do free motion quilting on this machine, because it's capable of that as well, you would just bump this over if you are the type that likes to free motion quilt with the presser feet, or excuse me, with the feed dogs down. You have that little lever right here, okay? The accessory bin is here, so you can pull this open and you can see all the different presser feet that come with this machine, as well as a few others that come in the little bag. We have a zipper foot, you have um, an edge guiding foot, you have your blind hem foot. There's another foot here that's good for decorative stitches and applique stuff. You have a little screwdriver. You have your lint brush, which is handy for cleaning out your machine. It comes with a few extra bobbins here. We can lift this little tray part up, and then inside you'll find a fancy button hole foot, which makes the most professional button holes that you've ever seen. This machine also includes several different types of button holes that you can create. There's an entire menu just on uh, button holes on this machine. There's one menu that has about 15 different button holes, and then there's a more basic one in one of the other uh, regular menus and then you also get a pack of needles so all that stuff goes in there you can put your tray back in and close it up here we have a secondary spool so if you're using or spool pin I should say so if you're doing a twin needle work on knits you can attach this and add another spool of thread and that extra spool pin you would place it right in here if you're gonna use it you put your other uh, spool of thread right here and then you would thread them both through the regular guides just as you would and then put one thread each into the twin needle that you're using so that's another option is to place that in there we have a walking foot for your bulky projects or if you're quilting doing some straight lines and this is definitely more substantial than uh, some of the cheap generic walking feet that you can get for machines so it's great that it actually is included i have a pack of needles in here i have a guide for the walking foot so say you want to quilt straight lines through a quilt that you're working on and you want them all to be half of an inch distance apart or one inch you can set this accordingly so that you can ride this in the previous line that you stitched and they're all the same distance apart then we have uh, a free motion quilting foot that you can put on your machine. So the machine, again, like I mentioned earlier, is definitely capable of free motion quilting. 
Now with the presser foot lift feature, we have a lot of different options. Remember, we can set the foot pedal heel to lift the presser foot up. You can set it to automatically lift the presser foot up. And sometimes it takes a little getting used to if every time you stop sewing, the foot keeps coming up. I know it takes a little getting used to. I totally love mine now. But remember that you can also set that off if you don't like the feature. And you always have that button in front that you can press to help you bring the presser foot up or down. Another option for that same feature is remember it came with a knee lift also. So if you're not familiar with this, let me just briefly show you how it works. You insert it here in an opening, make sure it's all the way in. And then let me try and show you with this camera here. But when I use my knee and I open this way, you can see that the presser foot comes up. So that's another option if you wanna have a little bit more control as to when exactly it goes up and you wanna have your hands on your project and not have to stop and press the presser foot lift. So a lot of different options to customize the machine to exactly what you need. Now I wanna show you that from the center needle position, remember I said I use the number three uh, on the keypad stitch to use for my quarter inch seam allowance that I need for Patrick pieces. Right now it's set on stitch number one, so this is the center needle position. Now I'm just putting this fabric here so it's a little bit lighter on the background so you can see the movement of the needle over. Now I'm gonna press number three and you'll see the needle kind of jump to the right, so now it's setting up so that the stitches will be exactly a quarter of an inch in from the edge of the presser foot, and then I simply use my presser foot as a guide. So here goes. See how it jumped over? Now, where the needle position is, is a quarter of an inch from the edge of my foot. So I'm piecing, say, Patrick pieces together, and I'm just gonna use the edge of my presser foot as the guide, and you're gonna see a perfect quarter inch seam. Using the heel to cut my threads, and that red line of stitching you can see there is a quarter of an inch in from the edge there that I was using to measure. Now if you want a perfect quarter of an inch, that's it right there. On my Patrick pieces, I like to sew a scant quarter inch, meaning a little bit narrower than a quarter inch. So what I do is that I just guide the fabric just inside the edge of the presser foot to get a perfect scant quarter inch every time, and I don't have to switch out my presser foot. And that's it for my review of the Juki DX5. I hope you enjoyed learning all about this machine and seeing some of my favorite features and capabilities of the machine. Now, if you enjoyed the video and maybe you're already in the market looking to upgrade your current machine, if you want to get your hands on one, I would encourage you to support my channel and Tim at So Many Things in Mount Dora, Florida, and use the link I've included for you in the description box below to make your purchase. That would be great. Again, leave me a comment below. Let me know what your favorite feature that I pointed out in the video review was, and then let me know if you know of a different brand, make, and model of sewing machine that can compete with this DX5 at a lower price point than this one currently costs. So thanks again for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, hit it with the thumbs up, share it with your friends who are in the market for new sewing machines, and don't forget to click the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Thanks again for watching. I will see you in the next video, and happy sewing.